Now, how to deal with toxic relationship? So what we'll do, we'll take a short break. Right, so let's come to the third part, um, is how to deal with toxic relationships. So we're in section two, part three of section two, which is how to deal with toxic relationship. This is where most of the questions, most of your questions have been have been directed in the directed to in your comments. Many of the sisters and many of the people have been mentioning what if the husband does this, what if the husband does that, and so on. This is where we're going to be dealing with it now. How to deal with toxic relationship. Now, before we get into this, there's this, there's a short exercise. Okay, so some of you, mashallah, have already listed some uh, common disruptors in marriage, uh, which many of you, mashallah, have um, mentioned instant, instantly. So let's go through some of them, uh, as you mentioned, because some of the things I've already listed as well. Most common barriers against love relationship. That's the way I framed it, okay? But it's the same thing what you've already mentioned. Number one is poor communication. Some of you already mentioned that. There's poor communication, lack of communication. Remember, I talked about this, and if, you, if I can do a little exercise here, uh, if somebody in the chat box tell me exactly what those communica uh, positive communications were, remember that circle? That circle, so if you can just, if the, for those who've already make notes, so you're making notes, if you can just tell me, love is the, uh, communi positive communication is the foundation of love. That circle that I drew, <clears throat> what was that? What did it entail? Just for our refreshing. Okay, uh, is that but not caring? Okay, number one is Ikram brother good is mutual understanding. Mutual understanding, what else? <clears throat> Positive language, what else? <clears throat> Compassion, G. Respect, yes. MashaAllah. What about understanding each other? Understanding each other, yes. Reciprocating, good. Language, using positive language, yes, exactly. Yes, poor communication. So common barriers, one of the number one is, and I put this right at the top, don't trigger each other. Yes, very good. We're going to talk about that. It's interesting because some of these terms are using, when I use those terms as well, mashallah. So it's good. So we're on the same wavelength. So <clears throat> number one, poor communication. This is number one reason, number one cause of um, um, uh, disruptors. Number one disruptors, lack of empathy. Again, we made reference to this over and over again. What does empathy mean, by the way? Can anyone tell me what empathy means? <clears throat> so lack of empathy. So empathy has two things. Understanding facts no, uh, is ascertaining the facts and understanding the feelings. It's two things. Understanding the facts and under, uh, ascertaining the facts and understanding the feelings, understanding each other's temperaments. Poor family time, no quality time. Cheating, Somebody's, somebody mentioned about cheating, yes? This is one of the main reasons. You know, this is where emotional affair and all these things come in, right? If you could recall what I mentioned about emotional affair is where one of the spouse, they begin to share their intimate feelings um, intimate feelings towards another person that who is no that who's not their spouse, sharing intimate feelings with somebody outside of their marriage, which they're not supposed to be sharing to, other than their own husband. <clears throat> These are, and as a result of that, those kind of people, when they come into your life, they start causing problems in the relationship. So cheating, yes, <clears throat> interference of outsiders, in-laws, lack of transparency. Nobody's mentioned this. Dishonesty. This is where dishonesty comes in. How about if another woman shares their intimate feelings with the husband? That's the whole point. The whole point is that you're supposed to share your intimate feelings with your husband, nobody else. Yes? If it's an um, uh, emotional affair, is when you're sharing your intimate feelings with somebody else other than your own spouse, in other words, to an outside person, to a work colleague, for example. Yes? Power struggle. There's a power struggle between husband and wife. The husband, he's got the reins and he's trying to exploit that, uh, exploit his um, 
uh, exploit his position, meaning abuse of power. There are certain cases where the wife, she wants to take control. She takes control. And she wears the, where they say, the pants in the house, for example. She tries to dominate the husband. So there's a clash. Yes, um, cheating, that's the reason uh, somebody's mentioned about cheating. Again, cheating, emotional affair is that aspect that leads to the physical cheating. That's what I put down as cheating. Cheating means it could be both either emotional or it can actually be physical cheating. In other words, he ends up having a physical relationship with another person. So that's the reason why I've kept it, uh, uh, that's the reason why I've kept it um, general. Uh, suspicion. Having too much suspicion, the Prophet said, hadith. Avoid suspicion, you know, avoid bad impression because false impression they can that's the worst form of lies. The Prophet Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, well, the justice who do not spy, do not be suspicious of one another. So these are the common disruptors. So interference of outsiders, families, all that comes into this. <clears throat> Suggestion. Now, how do you diffuse a toxic relationship? So there's two things. One is, there's two columns here. One is things to do, things not to do. Number one, how to diffuse a toxic relationship. So if you're in a situation that where any of the previous ones apply to you, your husband's cheated on you, for example, God forbid, he slept with another woman, for example, or your wife slept with another man, for example, or there is uh, <clears throat> it is interference or there's lack of transparency, all of those things has happened. What is the solution? What are the recommendations I can give? confiding in me saying that he feels bad okay somebody mentioned that um if a woman shares her intimate feelings with another woman's husband the man who's <clears throat> she's confiding in is saying that he feels bad and seems as though she needs help but it hurts the wife well first of all like, that's dangerous sharing it with another uh with another with another man because end of the day you're still sharing with another person then aren't you it can be a bit difficult. It's best if you speak to, you see, in these kind of cases, if you're going through problems, always start off with your families. Never, ever talk about other people, <clears throat> people from outside. Always start with your family members, brothers, sisters, or someone, okay, right? Maybe, maybe your brother-in-law, a brother-in-law, a senior brother-in-law, for example, but nobody from outside. Because when you do that, you can open the doors. <clears throat> so in any case, the first thing I can suggest you is focus on your relationship essentials. In other words, the core relationship. Okay? So in other words, concentrate on your relationship essentials. What that basically means. In other words, is that even though your husband and wife, going, <clears throat> even though you're going through difficulties between yourselves, the husband, the wife should continuously be the homemaker. The wife should continuously do cook and clean. Don't forget, you've got children, you've got kids involved. Make sure you tend to the needs of your children. Make sure you tend to the needs of your husband as much as you can. Likewise with the husband. If there's any problems between, husband, between you and your wife, at least still focus on your relationship. End of the day, she's your wife. She's the mother of your kids. Continue providing for him. Do whatever you can in to ensure that the relationship between yourself still continues. The relationship still continues. Because the moment that you cut communication and you break relationship, it's going to have further devastating impacts. So I'm going through this step by step. So how do you diffuse a toxic relationship? Number one is focus on your relationship essentials. Focus on your priorities. Focus on those things which are necessary. Taking care of bills, for example. Uh, cooking and cleaning, for example. Going out and providing, for example. Go out shopping and things like that, etc. Continue with those. Do not stop them. Number two. Converse using positive language. When you need to talk, use positive language with each other. All right? Don't use negative language. Positive language, I mean words of uh, compassion, words of empathy. Or for instance, don't you swear, for example, don't swear or don't start criticizing, don't start using certain words or phrases that will offend you, the person that will put you, the person into a defense mode. Forget all of that. Avoid the triggers. Don't do those things that you know that's gonna trigger the, uh, tr trigger the person. Respond at the time of need. Even despite there's problems going on between you and your spouse, when your spouse, calls you, respond to them at the time of the need. Always respond to them at the time of the need. So I'm not eating up. Well, even again, despite saying that he's not upset and angry, just deciding how he wants to move forward. 
Okay, somebody's asked, uh, what if, for example, I mean, it depends. I mean, I, is there a problem between you, you and your uh, husband? Is there a problem or is it just the fact that he just would like to eat out? Uh, you have to be clear about that. What if the spouse is not mentally stable? If he's not mentally stable, he needs, he needs to go to a doctor then. That's all I can say. If he's not mentally stable, he needs, he, needs, uh, he needs to go to a psychiatrist or something, right? Respond at the time of need. Respond when you need. And when you respond, respond calmly. Don't be too agitated. I understand these things are very, very difficult and it's easier said than done. And I know some of the people already listening to this, you think, hold on, how am I going to do all this? Because the relationship is so bad, especially if another woman, if it involves another woman, yes, it involves another person, you know, physical relationship, whatever it may be, external, so on. You see, you can't make things better, but don't make things worse. Yes, you can diffuse, but not necessarily make things worse. Most Muslim males, uh, again, there's a lot of ego. Please permit to inform my positive observation. Islam has given us positive knowledge to come to our chain and ban in Banwa. Muslim need to continue uh, gain knowledge and inform the negative culture beliefs in Islamic knowledge. Yes, exactly. Very true. I agree with you. That's another thing as well that, you know, lack of Islamic knowledge, uh, lack of Islamic knowledge. Most Muslim males need to let go of their ego and still believe that there's still positive control of Islamic form. Yes. Yeah, you have to let go of the ego. That's correct. Uh, yes, there are underlying issues such as communicating issues, lack of trust. Yes, there are. <clears throat> yes, again, uh, I'm not sure when you joined, but uh, I actually address all of these right in the beginning, uh, sister. So I'm not sure if you have joined in the beginning, but again, I addressed all of this in the beginning. Respond calmly. Yes. Uh, talk and listen to each other talk and listen to each other you know when it comes to time you know time to talk we talked about this didn't we initially that um, you know if there's a <clears throat> those three case studies that we did in the beginning uh, one for the sister one for the, one for the uh, and one for the couple you know many of you were, many of you were mentioning many of you were mentioning that um, you know talk to each other so sit down and talk about this express your concerns create reasonable barriers against external influences. So if, for example, if you're in a situation that where your husband or, or your wife is talking to another person or they've been in a relationship or something, then you need to then make that decision that whether you want to continue with this relationship or not. If you do not want to continue this relationship, you want to end it, then that's entirely up to you. But if you still want to continue this relationship, you still want to continue living on husband and wife, then you have to start creating reasonable barriers. Now, I'm not saying boundaries. Boundaries can sometimes can be misinterpreted in different, different ways. <clears throat> yes, exactly. So create reasonable boundaries against external influences. What do we mean by that? For example, I had a case that where there was, um, I, had a, I had an instance of a case that where there was a woman that she complained and she was saying that, you know, my, uh, I found out my husband, he's talking to other girls, he's talking to other women, but at the same time, but it was it didn't end up in a physical relationship. So she said that, is it permissible for me to check my husband's phone? Then I said, look, you know, has a husband allowed you to check the phone? And then I approached the husband that, would you allow your wife to check your, uh, check your wife's phone? He says, yes, I will, I will allow her to check. So if your spouse has allowed you to check your phone, then you should. Like I have the, like, <clears throat> since the day of my marriage, I always had an open policy, me and my wife. My wife has access to my phone. I have access to her phone. She has access to my emails. And we only have one email account. That's my email account. My wife doesn't have an email account. Everything is all in one. That's one standard policy that I've had. So whenever I go to the bathroom toilet, I don't need to take my phone. I can leave it in the bedroom. If she needs to check something on Amazon, she's got my phone to check. If she needs to check something, she can check. We have an open policy. And that's something that you should always have. Have an open policy between you. This is not to suspect one another, but also to build trust because there's something called accountability. You have to be accountable to one another. So create reasonable barriers against external influences. So for example, you know, I'm not saying check the phones, but I would say that if, for example, the husband, if he is guilty of his own crime, then why do you allow your wife to check your phone, for example? Why do you allow, why do you allow your wife to have access, to, for example? Yes, um, you know, and those people that who are creating problems or the who are external influences, you try to distance themselves for somehow, you know, tell that woman to, for example, to get out of your life, for example. If, for example, those external influences are due to family, then simply move out, for example, you know, give her a separate accommodation. There's many things. 
Again, these are generic advice, but they vary between different individuals. Most Muslim females want to build an Islamic home, but males own will only want to build a traditional culture home and use the parents' footsteps. Yes, unfortunately, there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of lot of culture on this, and uh, you know, again, uh, this needs to be uh, this needs to be addressed. But again, all of this needs to. Um, <clears throat> Again, this is going to take a long time. You have a long time to uh, to take out this uh, to come out of this mentality. But as mentioned here, is that create reasonable barriers and forgive and trust. You see, if you're going through problems and if you want to diffuse your relationship, you need to first be willing to forgive. So, if for example, the person that's committed the crime, are they genuinely uh, sorry for the crime or not? If they are, then you need to learn to forgive them as much as you can. Number two is that are you willing to give, are you willing to risk to give them another chance? Again, I'm putting it all on you. Are you willing to give them the chance? Are you willing to risk to give them a chance? If you're not willing to risk it, consider divorce. If you don't want to go through a divorce, you have to take the risk to give them a chance. And then number three, once you've done that, learn to forgive, learn to trust, and then create reasonable barriers. Now, reasonable barriers, that's depending on how you create them. Ensure that none of these influences happen ever again. Please reinforce on the males responsible. They, uh, they, okay, please kindly reinforce on males responsibility. They overwork female with too much stress and responsibilities. Again, I think I'm not sure if you, again, I've, I've addressed this, I've, I've addressed this in the beginning. You know, um, when I talked about um, common mistakes that men make and you know the solutions, I talked about that. I made, I made that very clear don't overburden, being considerate. I talked about this, didn't I? Being considerate, don't overwhelm them with too many things. And I talked about this in the beginning that where certain things about women, they get easily overwhelmed. Again, I talked about this right in the beginning. <clears throat> Hopefully the recording should be available afterwards for everybody. And give space to each other. Somebody mentioned, one of the sisters mentioned that, oh, well, women need space. Of course, I don't, I don't, dis I don't disagree with that. That's the reason why I said, give, give space to each other. Sometimes the wife needs also space. If the wife wants to go to a marriage counseling as a marriage as it stands, but the husband is not up for it, what do you advise in this case? Well, you know what? Like I say, it's two to tango. If the wife is willing to make the uh, make the change, if the husband not willing to change, I'm sorry to say, then you know it's um, you can only do whatever you can. Follow these recommendations. That's all I can say. You can only do whatever you can. You see, they say you only clap it two hands. You don't clap it one hand. Do you? Every marriage relationship. It only works, every marriage relationship, it works by both ways. That's as simple as that. It cannot just, it cannot just happen unilaterally. It happens, it's bilateral relationship. It takes place, it's a relationship that, it's a, it's a work that needs to take, uh, happen between both. It's an effort that needs to take place between both. Anyways, I think some of these questions, they are taking time, it's already uh, late. Uh, okay, so give each other space. So these are some of the things that you do. These are the things you don't do, not to do. Don't be confrontational. I understand that many of you have already been confrontational, but you know what? Confrontational, I mean, is arguing, you know, um, quarreling, uh, um, um, uh, triggering a conflict, for example. You know, try not to avoid, uh, try to avoid this because this is only going to make things worse. Overreact. Try not to overreact. Respond calmly, as I said. When you overreact, you because what happens when you overreact, then it kind of you lose your common sense, if I can use this term. You begin to lose your common sense in the sense that where you you don't you don't look at the circumstances, you don't look at the conditions, you don't know how to communicate. All of these things happen, right? So many things are going on into your mind. And when you start overreacting, it just exacerbates the matter worse. What you do in this case is, if anything's happened, just go retreat into your own space, think over the situation, and then respond when you need to respond, and respond, uh, and then address the issue when you uh, address the issue appropriately. Negative language, avoid negative language, abusive language. I'll say, well, I'll use the term abusive language, not to use abusive language. Suspect or hover. Don't keep us suspecting hovering over the individual. In other words, monitoring them all the time. You know, monitoring every monitoring them every single move, or monitoring every single of their emails and things like that. Okay, right? Especially if they don't want you to do that, then don't do that because it's just only going to increase uh, increase mistrust. Excessive plead, excessively pleading. Don't plead for too much attention. 
sometimes you know people can go overboard to the degree that where you start um, pleading for too much attention you don't need to do that demand uh, and demand unwanted attention stonewalling i'm not sure if you any of you've heard of the stonewall stonewalling basically means completely shutting down communication sometimes people do this as a form of punishment you know if there's a if there's been an issue between husband and wife and then either the husband for example or the wife for example they completely shut down communication they're going to a shutdown mode in other words they do not communicate they don't talk they don't do anything and this is done because of to punish the other person it's punishing them that's what you call stonewalling never ever do that because what that only that's only going to um push the person uh, further away so seizing all communication as a form of punishment that's what it means do not do that yes if you just seize communication for a short time just to give each other space that's different altogether and by the way there's a hadith in where the prophet sallallahu said uh farhana uh, i don't know who this is um yes my husband does this sometimes there is good article i found on it to help both parties it also gives various reasons for it yes there's so many <clears throat> there's so many reasons for this for stonewalling it happens all the time it's um if i'm not mistaken right and many of you can many of you will agree to this this is um they do this as a form of revenge okay they do this as a form of revenge they do stonewalling not to take revenge on their own partner yes they do this you see there's a hadith where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that no person is allowed to cease communication from their relatives no more than 3 days there's a famous hadith in bukhari the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you know if you cease communication more than 3 days then that's tantamount to breaking ties this also applies to husband and wife yes if there are uh, problems between husband and wife and if you need to stop communication for a certain reason then the hadith mentioned don't do it no more than 3 days after 3 days you have to then somehow come back to communicating yes you don't have to then you don't have to now be, uh, resume a cordial communication because you know uh, is things are never going to be the same but the least you can do is at least do the salam and focus on the re essential relations and communicate when you need to communicate so this is what stone warning is and the, yes and i agree there's a lot of research done on this but stone warning has very different interpret uh, very different approaches but one of the things that we're taking from here is is seizing all communication as a form of punishment to 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 avenge uh, for personal for personal revenge disconnecting don't disconnect from each other being problem focused do not be problem focused okay don't be too problem focused rather always be solution focused mm -hmm.